From the music desk at 88.9, I'm Justin Barney, and this is a session with the Marias. I went to their home turf of LA to record this at Gold Diggers. This is the Marias. Yeah. Meet me on the other 
I play guitar. I'm Maria and I sing and write. I'm Josh and I play drums and write and produce. <laughs> I'm Edward. I play keys. Great. And sing. And sing now. I've been given a mic. <laughs> <laughs> Faithful decision. Well, uh, thank you for <laughs> making oh, straight <laughs> <laughs> Should we do it after? 
Yeah. No, that's okay. staying in. <laughs> we are yeah. keeping that. Yeah. <laughs> but do you want some water? No. No, oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you, though. <laughs> this is going to be good. <laughs> yeah, right? Um, uh, we were just talking before, and, and you're from Puerto Rico, and then you moved to Atlanta because your dad was fixing cars. Mm-hmm. You had a, a pretty unique reason for coming to L.A. Could you uh, tell us about that? Yes. So a friend of mine who is also from Atlanta moved to L.A. to pursue music, and she was hitting me up every single day to, to move there. And... Um, at this company that I was working at, it was an ad agency, they had a Halloween costume contest and the winner got $5,000 and I won. And with that $5,000, I bought a car and with that car, I drove to LA. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I mean, you have to tell us what the costume was. I was a market. <laughs> a target market. I was a target market. The we like built market. this whole wooden market with fruit and we had money and it was a whole thing it was a whole experience and did you work at the ad agency i did yeah and then they so you work at an ad agency they have this thing for five thousand dollars you win you get five thousand dollars you're like see ya yeah yeah Yeah. (laughs) exactly that's exactly that's exactly what happened they never did the halloween costume contest again Uh, right (laughs) um and then and then who was the first person that you met in the band Actually, I met Eddie How? Um, at my friend who I mentioned before, who was hitting me up every day from Atlanta to L.A. Through her, they met at a party and I was her roommate at the time. And Eddie came over to play music with her. And that's where I met him. And then and then I met Josh, but I didn't know that they were friends. And then I went to a party with Josh and Eddie was there. And I was like, wait, mm-hmm. it turns out they were really good friends. What is your what was your first impression of Maria? My first impression of Maria? Yeah. Um, well, I was running sound at a at a venue and she was singing and performing and my first impression was wow, her voice is incredible. Um, my second impression is wow, she's really hot too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so I asked her if she wanted to record with me and we started writing and recording together shortly after. And and uh, uh, and how did you get incorporated into all of this? Um, we don't really know. <laughs> yeah, I don't really know either. No, I've known Josh forever, and we've been playing in bands together since we were like 10, 11. And then um, they started writing together and asked me to play with them, and yeah. And, and so Cinematic is, is the new, uh, or I mean Cinema is the new album, and it is cinematic. I mean, it, it's like it starts off it, with that, like, it sets the scene and like i i mean maybe it's because i went into it being like this is what the album's name is and like here here is a big opening scene and then it was like here's an action scene and here is like you know and here's (laughs) some drama and then like in the middle there's like kind of a break um uh, was that the idea yes 100 percent. from beginning to end we wanted the album to sound like um like a movie and so how to what if if it were like like what kind of movie there are movies <laughs> there's you know um the hangover and then there is no more like a drama for sure but like an indie drama with some comedy sprinkled in there and maybe a little like marvel action going on too <laughs> <laughs> what um what, what is what would you say is your favorite movie? Um, my favorite movie. We've been watching a lot of mo- movies really recently like during Garden quarantine. State. Yeah, I was gonna say Garden State is up there. Just love that movie. Um, uh, Black Swan, incredible movie. Kind of two very different movies, but um, mm-hmm. yeah, I put I put Garden State up there. Oh, there was another one recently, but I'm not gonna take the time to remember it. <laughs> <laughs> there, but you should know there was another one. Okay. <laughs> um. Uh, how did so we're playing hush right now how did how did hush come together um yeah i was thinking about my movie (laughs) the other movie (laughs) it was wes anderson uh kingdom um moonrise kingdom moonrise kingdom (laughs) love that movie great movie um hush came together sort of randomly because we were supposed to be working on another song that day and i had just purchased um a whole bunch of new uh, digital soft synths 
and I was cycling through the patches, finding new sounds, and I was very excited. And I found this one that sounded very similar to the Hush uh, bass line. And I was like, that was kind of the first thing I played when I was hearing the sound. And then I was like, that's kind of cool. And I thought it was from something, but I, I asked a bunch of people and they said no. So I was like, cool. <laughs> um, and then we just worked on that all day. And I don't think we thought it was going to be a single. Don't even know if we thought it was going to be on the album. It was just kind of like, we're just going to do this today. And now it's <laughs> our single and it's the, the, the radio song. So very, um, very unpredictable, that one. And what is it about lyrically? It's about, you know, telling external voices and internal voices that always have like an opinion about what you're doing, maybe some haters, basically telling them to hush. And uh, and have you you, uh, refer to yourself as a loser? Mm -hmm. And I was wondering where that came from. Um, when I am feeling really down and depressed, I think I just suck at everything. And so that's where the loser reference comes about. I just want to lay in bed, put the covers over my head and feel like I suck at everything. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the la I think maybe my favorite song on the album is the last song. I It's like, it's, it is... I don't want to say it's like it's so different because there's like there's parts of the album that are that are like really big and there are some that are like really more minimal and uh, I I just love how the last song comes together and uh, lyrically it is like you um reincarnate into a lamb. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's kind of it's like the most surreal <laughs> lyrics of the whole album for sure. <laughs> Um, uh, and and also I think it's the, it's definitely the most it's the wordiest. Mm -hmm. um, uh, where like where did that song come from, or where where was that place? The lyrics were just from a journal entry that I wrote while we were all on tour together, and it was probably one of the darkest moments I think collectively that we've experienced together, and it was just a, a really difficult tour for us. And How so? so it was very very long drives very little sleep um we were in a van and we were on a we were opening and it was on a bus tour so we were having to very much play catch up and mm -hmm. get to these venues that maybe wouldn't have been routed for us if it was just us but because they're in a bus they can drive overnight mm -hmm. we didn't drive overnight so it was just like really grueling in the car when we woke up and 10 12 hour drives every day yeah um, and playing like when the lights are on still and you know people so it was, in their seats yeah people just walk into their seats on the phone it was also in theaters where it was all seated venues <laughs> too so it wasn't like you know like a normal gig or it was very um, different to yeah. what we were used to yeah so it was really difficult for us um, and I remember when I was writing that everybody was sleeping I was the only one sitting up um, and I was just looking out the window and I always imagine myself as like an animal that I see on the side of the road on these like long drives. And I'm like, the fence is like this tall. It's maybe three feet tall. You can just jump and just be free and you don't have to be in this field. It's like you can do whatever you want, you know? So and in that moment being in the van, you know, I could literally pull over and open the door and I'm, and I'm gone, I'm free. Um, so I felt as contained as those animals inside those fences, these three foot fences. I, I, I think from a, a musical standpoint, it's for sure the most distinctively jazzy song that you guys do. Uh, do you like have uh, backgrounds in jazz or is, is that um, part of it? Eddie does and Jesse does a bit. I, uh, I dabble. <laughs> <laughs> I dabble with jazz, but that, that one in particular was more so... Um, years of just like on the back burner and just like an idea that I kind of had from 2000. It was an old jam we would just do years ago. Yeah, before the Maria's even, it was just something that like existed. That progression. <laughs> and that yeah. But I remember it was at, at his dad's house that we were living at the time. Um, there's a piano in the living room and I remember waking up one morning and he was playing the chords and I was like, and, and singing some of the melody that you hear at the very end. And I loved it. The, the second I heard it, I was like, this 
you have to do something with this. And then I think they tried to do something with uh, the band that they were in before, but it never, um, you know, they made it never the made it through the gates. <laughs> We would play it live, but we never like really recorded it. Yeah, it. but it was totally different then. It was like the yeah. same progression, but it was a song. It had, it had a and verse and chorus. Like a chorus, and now and then it wasn't until a couple of years ago when we were writing for the for cinema, and you started uh, re-recording it. And yeah, like, I just started away. re-recording it. I think Maria was like, "Whatever happened to that song?" I was like, "Oh shit!" Like, what did happen to that song? And we started. I just like immediately started re-recording it, and then Maria. I think that night mm-hmm. we were all hanging at the house and um, she was going through her old journal of the tour from like a year before that. And it she was, was reading me, us. me, Josh, and Eddie. Yeah, she was reading us this passage from the from her journal and we were all just like, whoa, that is dark. <laughs> <laughs> and we all just started laughing so hard because it's like if you don't laugh then we would just be crying. Because yeah, we were crying. laughing at how mm-hmm. dark it was because we all experienced this together. And, you know, so reading it out loud, I felt that everybody felt the same. It's nice because Maria was the only one out of all of us who had written any of her thoughts down. Mm. And hearing it back after not experiencing that tour for about a year, year and a half, it perfectly encapsulated, I think, like she said, the collective sort of sentiment. And it was every time I hear that song now, it's places me right back in the van (laughs) (laughs) but it is special because i mean none of us i mean i don't think you guys have been keeping a journal (laughs) oh well (laughs) a surprise yeah but But there is a line that says eddie is driving like the van is slowly drifting into the other lane and then eddie is driving and when she said that that night we just lost it It because eddie you were thinking like yeah i was like oh is this a attack on my <laughs> <laughs> drivemanship, but no, I, I actually said, know. Metaphor? <laughs> I said the van is slowly drifting into the other lane, and Eddie was like, is she about to say? And I go, Eddie is driving. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Um, I actually, yeah. I can almost remember, I mean, I'm pretty sure I know what you were referring to when I was driving, <laughs> and it was a cornfield in mm-hmm. Iowa on the way to um, Minneapolis. Mm-hmm. There were strong headwinds <laughs> and a torrential downpour, so I'm just gonna, I wanna put that there for the record. <laughs> Allow me to defend myself. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, it just, it, we, that was like the, one of the darker moments of tour. What, what's your favorite memory from that tour, a, a moment? Favorite moment from that um, tour? I don't remember my favorite moment from that particular tour. Um, but a favorite moment on tour, I, I can't remember exactly which one it was, but we had pulled over on the side of the road and we found this like open grassy field and everybody just started like playing soccer, like doing cartwheels, climbing trees, just, yeah, being kids again. Yeah. Tour yep. really brings the kid out of you until, mm-hmm. until you're just like, I can't even be Especially after a 10 hour drive. Yeah. They start twerking. Everything yeah. Starts going crazy. Oh, yes. Uh, a lot of twerking going on. You got over the metaphorical fence. Um, yeah. There. Yes. Um, so, and I, I would love to, on the radio, have a, a song to come out of that mm-hmm. is, um, that you pick. And so, um, I would, I would, I, I would love for each one of you to talk about a, uh, like a song recently that you can't stop listening to or has been stuck in your head or just like your most recent song obsession. Um, okay. We'll start, we'll, we'll go left to right. Okay. Um, I'll shout out the new Sam Evian song, Knock Knock. It's really good. Played it a bunch of times, mm-hmm. probably too many times. But yeah, <laughs> he's great. And what do you like about it? Uh, oh, wait, all the like the guitar tones and the trumpet and just the whole production of it is it's really really cool maria what is the song that you can't stop the with? last song that i got just extremely obsessed with had it on repeat for days on end was leave the door open is that gonna be yours <laughs> yeah. it's just such a good song um i love them both and you know the nostalgia in it like the just the swag just everything about that song is perfect it's a perfect song and you're gonna pick that too 
I was, but I'll change mine now. No, um, I think like a piggyback on it. What what do you like about it? Oh man, um, the playfulness is huge. I love that they're not taking themselves too seriously in it, but they're still coming out with just an absolute banger. And it's obviously you know it's derivative of like older like '60s, '70s, '80s music, but it's still feels modern and the way they do it and the melodies and the progressions and just everything just really slaps. Hell yeah. <laughs> um, I think a song that I've been gravitating a lot towards recently is Guess Again by Jeff Tweedy from his newer album. I just love Jeff Tweedy. I love <laughs> Wilco and it's, it's cool that he has his sons on the album playing yeah. with him and it's just a yeah I don't know why do you think that you latch on to Jeff Tweedy oh I, <laughs> I don't know I, I love the sound I love how visceral it all is raw and affected and I don't know I mean I, I love Wilco I think they're such a dynamic and yeah I know Jesse does too a little bit great bit yeah <laughs> we, all, we all like Wilco we all like Wilco yeah <laughs> all right uh, that's it. Cool. So thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Yeah, thank you.